What's up everybody, Sean here and thank you for joining me. Today we are going to talk about the Orient Mako 40mm which is actually 39.9mm to be exact. I will go through the specs, the design, my thoughts on it and some of the controversies behind this first release. So this watch comes in at a case size of 39.9mm, hence the 40mm name, a lug to lug distance of 46.5mm, a lug width of 20mm, a thickness of 12.8mm and is made of stainless steel. On the front, we have a sapphire crystal glass and a screw down case back on the back. This watch runs on the Orient Caliber F6722 which is automatic, hand winds and hex and has a power reserve of 40 hours, a water resistance of 200 meters, and it retails for 340 US dollars at the time of this filming. So the Orion Diver models have traditionally been around 41.5 millimeters or larger, which isn't a bad size at all. However, there are many of us who simply find a smaller watch more comfortable and that demand has really shown a resurgence in recent years. Now Orion hasn't been the quickest to respond to this shift back to smaller watches, but at least we are already seeing their intentions with the recent 38mm Bambino and now with this 40mm Orient Mako. This new model comes in 5 dial color variations. We have black, navy and white on a steel bracelet and apricot and lilac on a color matched calfskin NATO strap. Here I have my own apricot version for this review. Now as far as I can tell, this 39.9mm case is completely new as I can't think of any recent models with a similar case size. The 46.5mm lug to lug distance fits my 6.25 inch wrist really nicely even on a NATO strap which tends to protrude out the sides more than on most bracelets. The finishing is also really nice with the mirror polished sides extending up to the beveling and a brush finish on the top of the lugs. There are also no crown guards giving very easy access to the signed crown which on a watch of this size I think it is the right way to go. The rotating bezel also appears to be a single piece of steel with the markings machine out of it rather than having the usual aluminium insert like other dive watches. The markings are filled with black paint and there is no loom pip but this isn't an ISO dive watch and I think it looks better without one anyway. On the top, we thankfully have a flat sapphire glass crystal that is flush with the bezel and on the back is Orion's signature solid screw down case back with the dolphin icon etched onto it. As this is a smaller watch compared to the conventional Meiko and Kamasu, the dial has been simplified with simple bar indices and just a single framed date window at the 3 o'clock position. The hour and minute hands are a simple baton design with an arrow tip seconds hand. Orient calls the dial color apricot, but it feels closer to a salmon color to me. It has a nice and clean sunburst finish to it and features the usual applied Orient logo and printed text. This dial did cause some degree of controversy when it was first released due to the printed minute scale around the edge of the dial. Early adopters were quick to notice a flaw in the distance between the 26 and 27 minute mark. Some early reviews even called out Orion for not spotting such an obvious mistake. However, Orion quickly responded with a recall to replace the dial on affected pieces which was pretty much the entire first batch of these watches. I myself did feel something was off when I first got the watch but it never really bothered me. Unsurprisingly, the flawed dial has now become a collector's item and is even being sought after now that it has been corrected. I'm told that owners of affected pieces aren't even sending their watches in due to its sudden collectability and I am definitely holding on to mine. The loom is pretty standard, good and reliable. It covers the bar indices, hands and seconds tip giving it a very elegant look which suits the size of the watch very well. The movement in the back is Orient's in-house workhorse caliber F6722. It is an automatic movement that hacks hand winds and is accurate to minus 15 to plus 25 seconds per day. It is very similar to the movement used in the current Meikos, Reis and Kamasu. The only main difference is that it omits the date complication to accommodate the smaller dial. 
These Orient movements have been out for several years now and are proving to be solid and reliable. Do not be fooled by the spec sheet as more often than not, these tend to run well within the spec and can easily be regulated if needed. While most of the other models come on a steel bracelet, the NATO strap that this one comes on is really quite nice. The calfskin leather has a textured surface on the top and a suede-like surface underneath. And it is very supple once broken in, making it very comfortable to wear throughout the day. The strap features stainless steel hardware and a signed buckle. And as it is a 20mm lug to lug with, you have no shortage of options if you decide to swap it out for something else. So to conclude this review, the Mako 40 represents a fresh new addition to the Orient lineup, especially for smaller wristed people like myself or simply those who prefer smaller watches. This is an interesting budget option to consider. It is very elegantly styled compared to their typically sporty looking dive watches while still retaining a casual feel suitable for almost any occasion. It is also very affordably priced and coming from a long-standing brand like Orient, it's definitely worth considering if you are looking for a casual, understated, yet durable watch on a budget. And that wraps it up for this review. If you liked it and would like to see more like it, please give me a like and subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next one.